my tap today is called the rogue buffalo nyati house the rogue buffalo i am shocked with the way uh, from the time kibaki took over up to now we have had a lot of development and the nis has developed backwards instead of going ahead with other people Actually, it is, as wa it is worse than the Nyayo House torture chamber days. In everything except one, uh, there is no element of physical torture. We don't have the element of physical torture. But uh, in all other aspects, it has gone back. Uh, Special Branch was there since colonial time. But in 1968, uh, Jomo Kenyatta wrote a directive to Special Branch, which we referred to it as Directive Number One. This directive was directing the intelligence to collect intelligence on everybody and anybody, mentioned and unmentioned, and others whom I'll be mentioning from time to time. You will report to me. Now, the president in 1968 is not the president in 2023. Uh, the president, as the head of state and commander-in-chief, he was also the head of the only political party there. The political party, Kanu, was a de facto political party, de facto single party. Uh, later, in 1982, it became de jure. So today, the president of Kenya, uh, the NIS should give him intelligence as the president of Kenya and not as head of the ruling party or ruling coalition. Uh, when it comes to threats such as Al-Shabaab and other international, I believe uh, and I'm rarely wrong, I believe that uh, the NIS is performing properly. But I have uh, three examples where the NIS is messy. I will start with uh, around 10 years ago, we were trying to start a security company. And uh, when it came to vetting, because by law security companies are vetted by NIS, and I was in charge of uh, security vetting in Rift Valley in the 90s, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was called to Chai House. Along Koinange Street, there is a, a hotel called Chai on the first floor. Uh, I think it is owned by Kenya National Tea Development Authority. I was called and I was told uh, that uh, what I've been doing is bad and I should call a press conference and disown what I had already said uh, so that uh, the company can be registered uh, with me. And uh, the, I was given two weeks notice I spent those two weeks uh, quite confused and I would tell anybody and everybody that when the intelligence have, are pressurizing you, it is really those who give in, please understand them. After those two weeks I decided that uh, I worship God and the second thing I worship after God is the truth. So I refused to call the press conference. Then the application went to uh, Re Madame Register of Companies, where it was written that uh, the companies, uh, the security company cannot be registered because one of the directors used to work with us and he had some security issues and we are afraid that if the company is registered, uh, he will have issues with the with the security uh, agencies such as the police force. Uh, 
when it reached Mr. Ndisia, the then Deputy Registrar General in charge of security companies, I talked to him. Uh, he referred me to the then Madam Registrar General, who referred me to the A AG Professor uh, Moigai, Gidhu Moigai. I went to Professor, I wrote a, a detailed letter to Professor Gidhu Moigai, which uh, I'd even said that. Uh, uh, it was around that time that uh, we had Westgate and I said uh, it appears that uh, the NIS is aware of crooks and it's not taking any action because if, you, if I would not have registered a company then uh, they would have let me free. That is when uh, Professor Githo Moigai uh, referred my case back to Madam Register of Companies and uh, the company was registered. Eight to ten years later I have never been a threat to police or any other security agencies. I will talk about the I will talk about uh, the judiciary. The judiciary uh, recently were having uh, some judges who are judicial officers who are being uh, appointed judges of the superior court. And uh, some were rejected. Uh, when, when it comes to the rejection, I have an issue. Do we really, we have judges who are of the high court and either uh, the, the, the judge in the high court wants to be a judge in the court of appeal or even the Supreme Court or even the Deputy Chief Justice, or even the Chief Justice. Do we really need another vetting for somebody who is already a judge? Because uh, he or she has a security of tenure for up to the time when he'll be 70 years. I don't think these people should be vetted. They should only attend the interview so that those who are joining the superior court, either from the uh, subordinate courts or the legal firms or even uh, schools of law, they should only be vetted to, I mean, they should only be interviewed, not vetted. They should be interviewed to find if they can take over from such people. It was wrong for the judicial service in the first place to have them uh, vetted. And when they were vetted, the NIS just wrote a letter and said, we have rejected A, B, C, D. Uh, Madam Registrar did well when she said uh, they should prove and uh, these people refused. And I'm happy that uh, she ignored them and, and proposed for the uh, officers to be appointed judges. It was unprofessional for the judicial service, for the, uh, for the intelligence. I know intelligence and military have benefited a lot from President Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta. So they do these things with a, an aim of gaining. But uh, once you, 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 you cannot be given a chance to say a thing on somebody and then later bypass the person and then go to the president and say reject those names. Someone was asking me, suppose you were in the intelligence, what would you have done? What happens is that uh, what used to happen and what should happen is that uh, the intelligence would have called the members of the Judicial Service Commission to a secure place like Nyati House. Give them, uh, give them the files, take to them. First of all, they take an oath. Then they are told the real reason why these people are. And then, most important for an intelligence officer, it is stupid for an intelligence officer to tell you that it is upon your, it, the, the, the bloods of Kenyans are on your hand and that it is upon you how to, to know how to handle that. We were trained that uh, for you to handle such an issue, you place yourself in the shoes of the officer whom you are advising. 
and then you give that officer all the options so that when the old the, you don't just hang him like a clothing and leave him to do whatever he does no you give that person all the options you know and you tell him what to do and you advise that person so that that person acts as if he's very wise second only to king solomon so uh, that is how they were wrong uh, and then there was this question now there are these judicial officers magistrates who are, or even judges who are on the court of uh, uh, judges who are high court and were going to court of appeal if you say that he has integrity issues what happens to cases that he is handling he will be handling and he has handled before don't you think that uh, somebody can use uh, the proceedings and say, you see, uh, the government has even rejected that person. Now we go to what happened to the IEBC. IEBC is where the intelligence performed the worst. The National Security and Advisory Committee is the body and the NIS is the heart. Now you can cut off the limbs, but the, the person still lives. But when you take out the heart, the person dies. So the whole thing was the NIS. If we look at the two, we were trained during special branch days that don't use evidence from one person to the other. The best way to investigate something is use that person's. If someone approaches you with evidence, use the evidence that he has presented against himself. That way you can. Now, if we have to take what uh, the commissioners were saying, what the National Security and Advisory Committee was saying, is that they went to tell the commissioners to hasten up to declare the presidential election, the presidential results, because the country was tense. I will not talk about what Chebukabipiti said. I'll use the NSI, N. SAC against itself. For, uh, for somebody who is not used to security matters, you may not know. But two to three hours before Chebukati announces who is going to be the president, usually a lot of people have been told. Before Chebukati told people that we are going to announce the results at 3 p.m., by midday he had already talked to the outgoing president, he had talked to service commanders, he had done everything. He, the National Security and Advisory Committee lands before Chebukati announces that uh, at 3 p.m. I'm going to announce. The National Security announces and it even makes security arrangements for such. Now for him to have told them at around noon and then they come at around two hours later to tell him to hasten up and the whole country knew that we were going to have one hour. That one tells a lot that uh, the, the National Security Advisory Committee is lying. Uh, then we have the, the story of the four commissioners. Now, if, if there is any opaqueness, then that is the opaqueness. I want to say that the four commissioners are not even fit to be polling clerks. Because a polling clerk, I have trained several polling clerks, we tell them uh, that uh, every vote counts. Supposing two parts, everybody had 15, I mean everybody had uh, equal votes, 15-15. And the polling clerk takes one vote, takes it to the other person. That is already 50 plus one. So every vote counts. Now, that polling clerk at Nawiyapong, at the board of Karamojong, Pokot, and Trukana, is very careful with the votes. What of uh, vice chair of the electoral commission? She was talking of 142,000 being 0 0.01. But a very simple mathematics, we do not even need to go into particulars because if you go to simple maths if all the votes were 100 
0.01. Why not take the 0.1 from the leading candidate? So that Ruto would have, instead of having 50.48, he would have had 50.47. Now, this 142 was deliberately done. This is a, a panic mode because the National Security and Advisory Committee after failing, they thought that they'll uh, convince uh, the whole commission to do what they wanted to do. But after failing, that is when the, the things were cooked up quickly without a second thought. Now, if the vice chair can confuse the call 0 0.01, the two candidates, Maure and Wajakoya, they, uh, got 0 0.6. Now, if they got 0 0.6 jointly, and they did not get 142,000, and then we are being told 0 0.01 is 142, that one even be calling it opaque is <laughs> understatement. The, there is the same speech. If you can see the, the, the speech that was given by Azimio and the speech they given by the four commissioners, were the same wording. It was, they were ordered, authored by one person. I want to state here and now that um, it happened once and it has happened now. Major Oswago, who was the CEO, was communicating with one of the candidates did, talking about the then chairman, Hassan. We now have Tuju talking to another commissioner uh, concerning uh, how what to go about. When you join the electoral commission, you enter. You have to take a, an oath. The oath is for the smooth running off. But if you go to an extent of now discussing your fellow people, and we have had election officials dying. How sure are you that the information you are passing? Because how sure are you that the information you are passing does not lead to your colleagues die? These are the people who are not supposed to be there. Uh, Tuju was heard on the phone assuring the commissioner about their security, their vehicles and hotel. That is not the work of, the elect of, of, of Tuju, minister without a ministry. That is the work. The commissioner, if they need more vehicles, if they need uh, more security, there is a system that they, uh, they use and it has never failed. Uh, you remember the, uh, Tuju was even telling them, to, uh, the commissioner was telling Tuju that we are agreeing on everything. Ex of, or, no, of the six topics, we are only agreeing on two. And Tuju was telling him, no, forget about the other four, you don't agree. Just give the press anything to talk. To me, you see, if the members of the National Security and Advisory Committee, the four commissioners committed treason. Because when I attended my basic special branch course in 19, November 1984, I was called treason means trying to change the will of the people through any other means apart from a ballot paper. Now Kenyans have talked left and all these people are trying to make things go right. So uh, I would blame them. Uh, the, the National Security and Advisory Committee had told uh, Chebukati that uh, if he were to explain, if he was to declare the way he was going to declare, then he would have blood on his hand. Let me say this. Chebukati and all commissioners, starting from all, all the way up to the, uh, the clerk who arranges people on the line before they enter, their work is to facilitate for the smooth voting. If Kenyans are so stupid not to accept what they themselves have put in the ballot papers, how does Chebukati come in? Uh, <laughs> Chebukati has hands on his on his hand, has blood on his hand, because a lot of 
cuckoos and goats were killed to celebrate the victory of Dr. Uh, Samuel Ruto. As I've said and I'm concluding that uh, the intelligence are supposed to call somebody in a secure place like Nyati House. They give you the whole file. You look at it. They discuss it with you. But most, there are two things that the National Security and Advisory Committee is supposed to advise somebody. If by now they have not been dismantled, God save our, I nearly said God save our king, God save our country. They call you to a secure place like Nyati House. They give you files which are detailing everything. You get, you get all the information in your head. Now when you have all the information in your head, then you discuss with them. You tell them your limitations. You say now this and this and this. And then they give you all the options. Because once you call the press conference and you start addressing, it is between you, press conference, and God. Uh, that is my, one of my longest steps, but uh, I believe it has passed some information. Thank you.